All right, well, welcome to our first weekly Alpha Architect Research Recap, uh, brought to you live from Alpha Architect Headquarters. So every week we're going to be recapping a blog post or some of the research that we've done on our website. So today I'm actually going to be interviewing Ryan about a, a blog post he wrote this week titled, Smart Beta is Officially Dead, But Not Forgotten. So Ryan, uh, this week you wrote about Smart Beta and began the article asking, others in the industry, how they would define it. So what were some of the responses you received? Yeah, so this, this was like, this was a, a big point of it was that I kind of asked all the smartest people I knew on, on Twitter, what what is smart beta to you? And I got back answers that were, um, smart beta is a marketing term, which was right. And I got back um, answers, like serious answers that about what smart beta was, and they were also right. Um, I got comical answers, um, and then I also got the answer uh, from Corey Hofstein. I said, I said to Corey, I said Corey, uh, I reached out to him on Twitter, and I said, Corey, what what what's smart beta to you? And Corey's response was pretty great because it, it was where this is all headed. Uh, he said, smart beta definition, Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> so. That's uh, and that so that that's kind of the the issue with with smart beta. All right, and so you know, just digging into your background a little bit, can you kind of tell us like how and why smart beta became such a popular term in the industry? Yeah, so so smart beta. Um, well, I guess to take even a step back further. So when ETFs were started, every single ETF just about was uh, market cap weighted. So. So if you launched an ETF, you launched a market cap weighted ETF. And the idea was that they were these low cost, tax efficient products, um, pretty different from what was out there in, in terms of mutual fund or hedge fund space. Um, eventually then it, ETFs evolved to where um, they started to do other things besides market cap weighting. The, the problem with that history though was that in a, like 2011, if you talk to a financial advisor, they were going to, uh, if you talk to a financial advisor and you said, uh, I have an ETF, they would then go, oh, okay, so you're, you're low cost, you're market cap weight. So the history of smart beta, it started because we needed a way in the industry to differentiate, to, just like to mentally break that in people's heads. You can do other things besides low cap, market cap weighted in ETFs. Gotcha. So, I mean, if smart beta was kind of helpful at first in that it basically helped advisors understand that ETFs can do other things, you know, like where would you say it went wrong and why do you deem it the term dead? Yeah. So, so there was like Barry, Barry Ritholtz had a great interview with, uh, Rob Arnott, and Rob Arnott, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm sure everybody does, but but he's he's the godfather of smart beta, right? So he invented these these RAFI indexes that the general idea behind them, right? And I'm oversimplifying, don't kill me, uh, but but it was uh, just simply let let's break price from the equation of weighting a portfolio of stocks against a benchmark. Um, so he created these indexes broke price, right? So market capitalization is price times number of shares outstanding. So he decided to let, let's break price because the issue was, uh, if you're a smart beta believer, the issue is that as the price of a stock goes up and it becomes more expensive, if you include price in the equation, um, the more expensive a stock becomes, the more higher the price goes, the more of that you own with market cap weighting. So let's, uh, Rob Arnott said, let's break that. Let's just not necessarily own more as the price of the stock goes up. Um, so, so that was great, right? And that was Rob Arnott's initial vision. Um, but Rob Arnott, uh, getting back to it, in Barry Ritholtz's interview um, in the Masters in Business uh, podcast, he said, um, smart beta has become meaningless. And, and, and the reason it's become meaningless is the, the reason that, that we started with in this paper is that uh, everybody has their own definition. And if there is no one unified definition, then it then it's then it it's worthless, right? So investors are now smart enough that they can they they understand that ETFs do other things besides market cap weighted. So there's no need to like 
use this this term to break that mindset between market cap weighted and not market cap weighted. Um, so so just tell investors what you do. If you if you do value investing and you equal weight, tell them we do value investing and we equal weight. If, if you do momentum investing and you equal weight, tell them we do momentum investing and you equal weight. If you do low volatility weighted, tell them you do low volatility weighted. How many stocks do you own? Tell them how many stocks you own, right? Like we can all understand that now. And, th and that's driven by the power of the internet. The internet now enables investors for the first time ever there's no more black boxes that that the fund managers have. We can now go out there and we can, if a fund manager tells us something, we can figure out if they actually do that or not, right? With ETFs in particular. Um, but so we, we don't need to like create these opaque terms anymore. Let's just tell investors what, what we're doing. Yeah. And so then kind of, would you even say, or what, what term would you prefer that people use? Yeah. The, the term, I, <laughs> the term I want people to use is, I, I just want you to say, like, what, what do you actually do? Um, if, if you do, like I said, yeah, if, if you if you equal weight your portfolio, say that. If you if you weight it by yields, dividends, right, say you weight by dividends. Um, because that is actually much less opaque, much clearer um, than, than this, like, hazy, smart beta term that no expert in the industry now is able to decide on, on a true definition for. And how would you even attempt them to differentiate the thousands of value ETFs. Yeah, well, so, yeah, that, how, how do you attempt to differentiate the thousands of value ETFs? I mean, that uh, that just comes back to that now investors are smart enough to understand the difference between the different the different value ETFs. You can say, hey, we wait by price to book, um, or we wait by enterprise multiples, or, or, or we wait by price to sales, whatever you may wait by. Um, don't wait by price to sales, but you get my gist. Um, uh, yeah, you, you just give people the facts. Just give people the facts and stop stop hiding behind, you know, because that's that's my point. There there was a reason for the smart beta term originally, even though it was a marketing term. Yep. Now it's like a hazy, opaque word that that it seems people hide behind to to intentionally make their their uh, their products more opaque, a little more you know, mystery as, as to what this black box goes back to that black box fund manager, which we, you know, I, I think the industry is shifting away from driven by the ETF industry. And, and we want to keep that going. Let's keep getting away, push towards more transparency, less opaqueness, anything that pushes towards more opaqueness, like, yeah. we don't want to. And do so, that. you know, one definition, smart beta is probably not adequate. Yeah. For all firms. So because nobody can agree on. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. So I like it. So, and that concludes our uh, first weekly summary. And uh, thanks for tuning in. The views expressed in this recording are the personal views of the participants as of the date indicated and do not necessarily reflect the views of Alpha Architect itself. Nothing contained in this recording constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice and should not be viewed as a current or past recommendation or a solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any securities or to adopt any investment strategy. The information in this recording is based on current market conditions which will fluctuate and may be superseded by subsequent market events or for other reasons. Alpha Architect does not resume any duty to update forward-looking statements. The information in this recording has been developed internally and or obtained from sources believed to be reliable. However, no representation or warranty, express or implied, is made or given by or on behalf of Alpha Architect as to the accuracy and completeness or fairness of the information contained in this recording. Any liability as a result of this recording, including direct, indirect, special, or consequential loss or damage is expressly disclaimed. Copyright 2018, Alpha Architect LLC, all rights reserved.